Hey guys, welcome to the AEFL Solitaire Rule Set Series. This is part one. The setup, running plays, tackles, and fumbles. For the past year, I have watched tons of electric football gameplay, both competitive and solitaire. I've read through all the rule sets, and there's tons of helpful people and videos out there, but nothing was 100% right for me. So I took ideas that I liked and experimented. Dozens and dozens of games, probably over 60 games. And I wanted to accomplish some goals. Number one, I wanted an easy setup. Number two, I wanted the game to clock in under two hours. Number three, I wanted big plays on offense and defense. Number four, I wanted my skill level to be a non-factor to ensure as much neutrality as possible. And finally, just looking to have fun with this and hopefully providing some other solitaire players out there with information they can use. So I think I've come up with a workable rule set that will meet all these goals. One of the ways I found to expedite gameplay is to come out in the same offensive formation on each snap and a defense set against that formation designed to defend against a run or pass. The decision to run or pass will be left up to a dice roll by the offense prior to the snap, but we'll go over that in a later video. One of the tools I use in setup is this scrimmage line divider, which I created out of some hobby wood and painted up. So let's set up a practice play using the California Pacifics on offense versus the Texas Tornadoes on defense. This is the single back formation that will come out on each snap. Let's first get the divider out of the way and then we'll go over where everyone is supposed to line up. The center is, as you would expect, lined up directly in the center of the field. And then the guards are lined up on the inside of the hash marks. The tackles are lined up on the outside of the hash marks. The quarterback will always be lined up behind center, set to move backwards. The tailback will be directly behind him with the front of his base at a 10-yard depth from the line of scrimmage. The receivers will be lined up outside the numbers. We'll get to the split end and tight end set up in a second. But let's go to the defensive line. It'll be a five-man defensive line with a nose guard, two defensive tackles, and two defensive ends. Hat on hat with the offensive line. The linebackers, corners, and safeties will all line up with the back of their bases at 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. The linebackers will line up on the hash marks the corners will line up directly opposite the wide receivers outside the numbers. And the safeties will line up halfway between the linebacker and the corner. So now that the safeties are set, we can get to the position of the split end and tight end, which will be lined up directly opposite the safeties and off the line because to have a legal formation, they can't be on there. I use that little block of wood. You can use anything, just be consistent. So now we're ready to run our play, and we're gonna call this a running play. And the first stoppage will occur when the quarterback and the tailback meet for the handoff exchange. The quarterback and the tailback don't actually have to meet in order for the handoff to be clean. When the bases pass each other, at that point, I stop the board just as I would if the tailback and quarterback actually touch, and I consider it a clean exchange. The problem occurs if the tailback falls over during impact with the quarterback or if he falls over before he meets the quarterback. That would be a broken play, and the play would then turn into a pass play. This is why the defense always has to be set up to guard against either a run or pass. 
Let's snap the ball and see what happens. And there's the handoff. There's the first stoppage. That's a clean handoff. 27 is now the ball carrier. And now we'll pivot the quarterback out of the way. You can pick him up if you want. But I pivot him towards the numbers. Just don't affect the position of the ball carrier. He's running as he's going to run. There's no adjustments on offense or defense at this point. Whether or not this run successful is entirely up to his ability, his offensive line, and the defense's ability to stop him. So now we cut the board back on and see what 27 can do. And right away, the right side of his offensive line clears a huge hole, gaping hole over there. And he breaks free. Nobody Looks like they can stop him. The only question is, will he score? And he does. 50 yards to the house for 27. So the setup is pretty simple. The challenge comes in to play when either the offense or the defense are backed up within their 10-yard line. So really, the only challenge for the offense in this situation is finding the appropriate place for the halfback to be set up. Anywhere else in the field, when he's 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, you have a clear reference mark uh, where to put the front of his base. But when you're on the 9 on in, he's somewhere in the end zone. So from the 9 to the 2, I use a stick that measures 5 yards. And one of my passing sticks happens to measure just that. And I just put it between the quarterback and the halfback. And like I said, that works anytime the offense is set up between the nine and the two yard line. When the offense is set up at the one or right at the goal line, I'll show you what I do then. And when you're lined up on the one or the goal line, you're not even going to get the five yard space between the halfback and quarterback. So you just put the halfback, the back of his base up against the end line and you're good. Now, when the defense is backed up inside their 10, instead of the linebackers, safeties, and cornerbacks, the back of their bases being all 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, I have them all guarding the goal line. The one variation to this is if the defense is backed up to their one or their goal line, the linebackers will still be in that spot between the defensive tackle and defensive end along that hash mark line, but they'll have to be put behind the defensive line. Meanwhile, the corners and safeties will still guard the goal line. So I define a tackle in the AEFL as a running back forced in a negative direction by direct contact with the front of the defender's base or the side of the defender's base. That's a tackle. That's a tackle. Now, if the running back hits the back of the defender's base, and turns in a negative direction. That's not automatically a tackle, and I'll explain that. So what happens if the running back turns in a negative direction on his own, or turns in a negative direction after hitting a teammate, or as in the last example, he hits the back of a defender's base and turns in a negative direction? Well, in any of those cases, if he turns and the front of his base is facing the goal line and he moves in that direction, even a little bit, he's down. And I give him forward progress back at the point where he turned. If, however, he turns in a negative direction in any of those scenarios but is pointed towards the sidelines and moves towards the sidelines, 
I'll let the play continue until the following happens. He either runs to the sideline and I give him forward progress at the point where he turned or I give him, let's say he turns, we, you always know where he turns, he first turns. Let's say it was right here at the, at the 47. Once he turns and moves backwards from that point five yards or greater, then he is down, the play's over, and once again I give him forward progress up at the point where he originally turned. Also, if the halfback turns and during the course of his run and he hasn't seen, he hasn't hit the sideline yet and he hasn't gone five yards back, if the defensive player in that time comes and hits him with the front or side of his base, the play is over. And once again, I'll give him forward progress back at the point where he initially turned. Now, sometimes under these tackling rules, you'll get into one of these bang-bang plays where the halfback is turned by a defensive player, but not in a negative direction, and then just as he leaves, he turns. And as long as the defensive player is still within a base length of the offensive player when that happens, I consider the uh, running back to be down. However, if upon breaking engagement with a defensive player, the running back is not turned in a negative direction, gets further than a base length away, and then subsequently turns. I do not consider him to be down, and he can still run and correct himself and turn it upfield. And just like in the other examples, he would be down if he loses five yards from that point, or runs out of bounds, or is tackled by the front or side of a defender's base. Of course, if the ball carrier turns up field before any of those things happen, then the play continues until he scores a touchdown, runs out of bounds, or is tackled further up field. So let's move on to fumbles. If the back of the ball carrier's base is touched by the front of the defender's base, then it is a fumble. Also, if the defender strikes the ball carrier knocking him over, it's a fumble. A coin flip or dice can be used to determine who recovers the fumble. On defense, the closest unengaged defender will recover it. On offense, the ball carrier recovers it. The back of the base fumble rule does not apply if the ball carrier is past 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. In this case, I'm using the 50-yard line as a line of scrimmage. Ball carrier is clearly past that. In this case, I would not consider this a fumble. However, knocking the ball carrier down, no matter where he is from the line of scrimmage, would still be considered a fumble. Also, another quick note, if the running back falls down anywhere in the field by himself, he's down. This concludes part one of my AEFL solitaire rule set. In part two, I'll go over the passing game. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.